there's two ways. The, the first and the easiest way in the middle of July is take a soil, take a shovel or, or a spade, get in there and dig some of those roots and carefully look for the white females, those white cysts. The other way, and maybe the more important way, is to soil sample at the end of the season and continually do that. So nematodes are animals like us, so they produce eggs and there's male and female eggs and the females will go through that cycle three different times. So you turn that life cycle and each cyst, which is a female worm, has those eggs. You can go from having just a few to having 10,000 very quickly. Uh, I would say at 10,000 you're probably losing yield even on your better resistant varieties. 10,000 is very high. In North Dakota, a lot of the fields that we find, unfortunately, are really pretty high by the time we identify it. And part of the reason is, is that soybean cyst nematode doesn't really show any above ground symptoms until you're taking maybe a 15 to 30 percent yield loss. And once you get those levels up to 10 or 20 or 30,000, it becomes a long term challenge to manage this. You can manage it, you can get those levels down, but it takes many years to do it. It's so much easier if you find it early before you have high levels and manage it right then. So if you really want to see if you have SCN and if your management tools are working, the best time is around harvest. It can be before harvest or after harvest, but the reason is is that, that SCN is going to go through those three cycles. And so it's going to give that SCN a chance to increase its numbers and so you can really see where you're at. So I recommend people go to the field entrance. You want to stab at the roots. You're going where that parasite or that pathogen lives. Give it a twist and pull it up. And if you take cores like this, maybe 10 or 20 in an area, mix them up, put them in the sampling bag, and send it into the lab. And so the sampling bags are all pre-labeled, they're pre-marked, but the North Dakota Soybean Council is going to cover all the lab fees associated with this. Growers get their data in the mail, and we estimate that over time, this program with the North Dakota Soybean Council is probably worth 10 to maybe $100 million for the growers. And this one is a complex problem and what we really recommend first is to soil sample. Figure out where you're at. Figure out if the tools are working. Get in the field. And the North Dakota Soybean Council supports a program to cover the lab fees for the growers that do that. After that it's crop rotation. Crop rotation is really important and the only other susceptible crop in North Dakota is dry, dry edible beans. So anything else is going to work for you. The genetic resistance is good, but you have to think about rotating that or rotating those varieties. And then in the last five years, there's been multiple seed treatments that have come out to try to help manage SCN. And so in, what you really want to do is look at your farm, see what fits, and use pretty much as many of those as you can to manage this.